Welcome back. We all know the brick and mortar stores are struggling to keep up in this so-called digital age. But one 136-year-old retailer has found a way to survive and, dare I say, thrive. Only a few years ago, Barnes & Noble was on the brink of collapse. They lost $18 million in 2018. We were forced to fire 1,800 full-time employees. Sales were down across the board. Shares sank by more than 80%, and the company's Nook e-reader, a proposed competitor to Amazon's Kindle, was failing miserably. And all that was before the pandemic hit. But what a difference a year can make. A new CEO, he has made a huge impact. Today's sales are back up to a pandemic level, the pre-pandemic levels, and the company is growing again big time with plans to open up 30 new stores. How did they do it? Here to explain all of it is the man responsible for the corporate comeback, James Daunt. He's the current CEO of Barnes & Noble, and he's here to tell us how he turned the page on the stress of sales. Uh, congratulations on the turnaround, James. It all started when you were 26 years old. What did you do? I opened a bookstore. Um, Where? In London, in the UK. You probably can gather from the accent that's where I'm from. Uh, so, yes, just a little independent bookstore. What was the model, the business model, and why did it work? I, the business model was to create the kind of store that I wanted uh, as a book reader, albeit as a callow youth. Um, it worked, I think, because we had really nice people working in there, a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, and if you present books in a, in a provocative, amusing, uh, engaging way, people will come and buy them from you. Where'd you go from there? I spent a long time slowly expanding. I made my original store twice as big by going next door. I opened a couple more. I didn't, frankly, do anything more than that for 25 years. And it was only after that that, that life became a little bit more interesting. When you looked at Barnes & Noble and saw the struggles it was having, what made you think you could turn it around? Well, after the 25 years of being an independent bookseller, I took over at the UK equivalent of Barnes & Noble Waterstones, which then had 300 stores and was uh, actually had hit the, the, the end of the road, um, and uh, took that on, turned it around, had a big success there. And it was after that that I came here to the United States, where Barnes & Noble was in a sort of similar type situation. And what did you quickly do in Barnes & Noble? To be honest, I do as little as possible, but what I do do is come as an independent bookseller myself and I say to each of the individual stores in the companies, look guys, you've got to make these stores good and then take away the, the uh, corporate controls upon them and say, you know, look to yourselves, make them decent stores and enough of them do that that you start moving up. Stop discounting the books, you said. Stop with the promotion from certain publishers. Just give me the best books, put them up front and you decide what your neighborhood needs and thrives on. You empowered the, locals, the local managers. We had to take away all of those corporate controls, and one of them was that we used to sell the space so that every single store had the exact same books in it because a publisher paid for them to be there. You had to take all of those away if you're going to let the booksellers do that, the job that they need to do themselves. And what kind of impact did it make? Well, I think the, the, the honest truth is that many, many stores became much better. A few of them became much worse because when you let people do their own thing, it'll go both ways. But at least we can see the ones that are doing less well and we can get the local neighboring store to come around and help them. And it's that sort of positive cycle that, that improves the stores. Is it recession proof? Uh, book buyers, uh, educated people, people who read, tend to be employed and tend to be much less susceptible to economic recession. So I've been a bookseller for a very long time, uh, you know, well over 30 years. And in that time, I've been through a few recessions. And booksellers tend to do quite well. Is it amazing in a digital age that people do something, they, they're going back to doing something they could have done 600 years ago, thousands of years ago, and it's reading? The and reading physical books. You can read ebooks, you can listen to them, audio, everything works well, but that supplements the core of how people engage with books, and that's with real, real physical books. And I just love the idea of empowering someone locally to do what they think the t people in their area want rather than from corporate America, and I think it's great. Everybody wins. James Daunt, congratulations on your success and, uh, and continue to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.